so many options. Not sure what kind of knives to get? Stay tuned. Greetings and salutations. I'm Gil. And I'm Gil, and this is Strategic Prepper. All right, so got you guys in the back of my forerunner, my bug out vehicle, if you will, um, to have a discussion about knives. This is really designed to be an introduction to knives, a, a primer on knives, kind of. Um, some of you guys are already knife uh, guys and gals, so you're already going to know some of this stuff. There are some of these bullet points that we're not going to get too deep into, like knife steels. You could talk for hours on knife steels. Just trying to give you guys a, a basic understanding of knives, what to get, uh, especially if you're new and you say, hey, I don't really know what to get. Um, so some general things to look out for, general concepts, and then some specific make and models. If you're saying, hey, listen, just tell me what to buy, but we'll give you that at the end of the video. So I've got my notes up here, but if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. So generally, I'm going to stay for this video, $30 to $100 price range, all right? Um, some guys will spend $500,000 on a knife. Uh, you know, that's their hobby, that's cool. Um, but for what we're doing, you know, once you get past a certain price point, there's, you get the law of diminishing returns is real, right? So you go from 30 to, to, to $60, right? You double your, your money, decent jump in quality. You go from 60 to 120, another pretty decent jump in quality, right? I'd say when you get to, especially for folding knives, right? Once you get to like 150, 200, after that, the the improvement starts really diminishing. Okay, now I have like like the folding knife I carry right now is a ninety dollar knife. You compare that to some of these hundred fifty dollar knives. Yeah, there's some difference, but it's, it's not it's, it's not the, it's not a large difference. Okay, so for me, that's kind of my ceiling. Once I start getting to that point, I really slow, my interest kind of wanes. Uh, now that depends. That changes too. If it's a large fixed blade, obviously it's a large slab of steel. That's gonna be a little different. Okay, so. I recommend you start out with three knives. Now, if you really, your budget's tight, you could get by with two. So number one, being a, a folding knife that you carry with you every day. Um, and then number two, being a mid-sized fixed blade. Number three, being a large fixed blade. Something eight, 10, 12 inch blade, um, something in that range. So if you really can only get two, I'd do a, 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 a folding knife, um, everyday carry knife, and then a mid-sized uh, fixed blade knife. Right, and I prioritize that everyday carry knife first. That ability to have a knife with you 24-7 uh, uh, is more important to me than the capability of a fixed blade, right? So um, that's where I would start. So we'll, we're gonna break, break it into those three categories and then we'll, we'll talk about these knives. So number one, um, the different steel types, all right? So carbon versus stainless, pretty much the two different categories you're gonna get. Okay, carbon steel naturally, like the name suggests, will can rust. Uh, will rust uh, a lot. That's why a lot of them are coated. You got to coat them with oil. Um, for the price point, they can actually give you pretty good performance. Uh, easy to sharpen to hold a decent a decent edge, right? Stainless steels, yeah, there's a whole gamut of quality. Okay, so on the low end, you'll get 440 series. Now, out of the 440 series, really only 440C is worth getting. Okay, so stay away. From, if it just says 440 or 440A, 440B, I'd stay away from those. So, and I say all that about 440, just to just because it's it's really common to see cheaper knives to see that number 440. So I want you guys to know what, it, what it's about. 440C, is, it's really still an entry level steel. It's not bad, uh, but if you're looking at a knife and you're not sure what steel uh, it is or if it's worth getting, you know, on the packaging, if it tells you what it is, Google it. Just look up that whatever the steel is. You know, uh, S S S 30V uh, S 110 and then look it up knife steel. There's websites dedicated to telling you um, exactly what it does, uh, hardness and, and stuff like that. And that way you'll get an idea of whether or not it's, it's, it's worth buying. I can't really get into all the steels uh, in this video. So another general rule, if it just says stainless, I'd stay away from it. Uh, if it's a decent quality stainless steel, the company will put that on the packaging. There is one exception to that that we'll get into, okay? And so, but those are really the two the, the different types of steel you can get into. Uh, as you get higher up in the price range, there's all these different types of stainless steels, and they'll have different properties, right? It, it, everything's a give and take. Some of them will be extremely hard, which can also mean that they're brittle and they'll chip easier and they're more difficult to sharpen. The other thing too is you could have two different companies with the same steel, they're not gonna be the same quality necessarily. If one company does a little bit of better heat treat, that's gonna change your performance. So when you start really getting into these details, um, 
if you're really into knives, uh, you know, that's something that you could really start looking into. Uh, also, blade shape, okay? So stay away from any kind of weird, unusual blade shapes. So instead of naming all of them and telling you what they're for, I'm just gonna show you, right? So the, some basic, you'll get the gist of it as I show you. We'll see how they're all, they're, you know, they all got a straight portion, a belly, comes to a decent point. They've got this K-bar right here, right? Nothing too exotic, okay? Good multi-purpose blades. Fully knives. Again, right, this one's got a slight recurve, not too bad. This one's got a nice belly to it. This Kershaw Del uh, Kershaw, Spyderco Delica, right? You get the idea, right? you, you can tell what I'm talking about. Some of them, these weird hoff bills. In fact, I think this is the, the most, un it's not an unusual, but the most unusual blade shape. Uh, this Kershaw Dividend that I carry right now. No hawk bills, no cleavers, nothing unusual like that. As you get deeper into the knife game, you know, you might decide to get one just for, for special use. Maybe just like it. But for starting out, I'd stay away from, uh, away from those. So one thing to note too, especially on the fixed blades, well, not especially, specifically on the fixed blades, uh, is the tang type. So let's look at this Zero Tolerance 170. So again, you can see it's got a fairly traditional blade grind, but if you notice, okay, if you look real close, the knife steel and the handle steel is all one piece, okay? It's a full tang knife and it comes out back. Typically speaking, that's the strongest type of knife, okay? So some people will only buy, only buy full tang knives. You notice on this K-Bar, at the very end, there's a little notch that comes out. So this is a rat tail or a rat tang knife. So the, the, the tang, uh, this blade does not maintain its thickness. It gets fairly thin and you can see it exits about that thickness, right? And you can see, you may be able to see in the camera there's some damage. I have used this before to pound stuff in. Uh, they're still pretty strong. And then the Mora knives, if I can find it, here we go. The only criticism some people have with these is that um, they're not a full tang knife. So the tang actually stops like right here, okay? And it's injected molded around it. One thing to note, I wouldn't get too wrapped up about that. Um, if you have a quality knife, so like this Moore knife, for example, uh, these things are pretty legendary or famous, I guess you could call it. They're cheap, uh, they're good quality, they're made in Sweden. Um, you know, they're not super steels or anything like that, but you can beat the heck out of them and they keep on going. I've never heard of someone breaking them um, in normal use. Of course, you can break any knife if you want to. Uh, so I wouldn't get too bent out of shape about the tang. There's a lot of really good knives that are not full tangs, okay? But that's what people talk about. They say, I want a full tang. That's what they're talking about. One of the downsides of full tang is weight, okay? So, and that's why, like for my bug out bag, I use this exact more knife. This is a stainless steel more knife companion. It's $20. Uh, this is the only exception to that rule I mentioned earlier about not buying a knife if it just specifies stainless and doesn't tell you what kind. Uh, I don't know what kind of stainless Moore uses, but they use a decent quality one. Um, any other company, if they just say stainless, I stay away from it. And the reason why I chose stainless in my buyout bag, because I want to be able to leave it and not worry about rust. So here's a Moore craft line. I bought this one just for the review, actually, to show you guys this. This is $10. Okay, good quality. It doesn't have the rubber over molding, but this is carbon steel. So I used this this weekend to open bags of uh, rock, some marble rock that I was doing some landscaping with, trying to get my house ready to sell, to buy more property, to grow more food. Another subject for another video. So those bags had some moisture and you could already see, um, you know, the blade wasn't soaked or anything like that, but uh, it's already starting some surface rust. I got to wipe it off. Now on these types of knives, like the Mora knives, the carbon steel will hold an edge a little better than the stainless, okay? When you start getting more expensive knives, you can get a stainless that'll hold it's just as well as carbon steel. Okay? So that's something to keep in mind. I generally stick with stainless steels because I don't want to, to worry about that. Uh, one thing to note too, just real quick about flat spines. So the back of this particular one is flat. That way it's got a nice 90 degree edge and you can use it to strike fire steels. You never use the blade of your knife to do that. Okay. Some knives will have it in the in the sheath. That's you know those are pretty cool. Um, some of them have a little notch right here to strike your fire, st fire steel, but never use the knife. I personally just use my multi-tool and use the file of my multi-tool 
uh, to do that. Another thing too you'll notice on all these knives I showed you, they were all plain edged knives. No serrated, well not all of them, I take that back, most of them. So here's my K-Bar with a combo. What I find is generally speaking, the plane is fine. Um, it's gonna work for just about everything you need. Uh, it's easier to sharpen. Uh, serrated knives can be difficult to sharpen. Uh, so I'd say if you're starting out, go with the plain edge knife. If you keep your sharp, it's gonna work. Um, as you get into using these more, you might end up getting a serrated knife because you might discover a particular use that, that you got for that. But I'd stick with plain edge. Um, I really haven't had a time where I'd really um, found myself wanting for a serrated, for a serrated edge. Um, sharpeners, just real quick about sharpeners. There's all kinds of different sharpeners. I use a Lansky sharpener, the particular kind they got that clamps onto your blade. It holds the stone at a at a constant angle, and you use different grits to get your to get your stone or to get your blade nice and sharp. There are the pull through style sharpeners that hold your hold your your metal and your ceramic at at an angle, uh, and you just pull through. One thing to note with that: don't pull too hard. Don't push down on it too hard. Let the let the blade do the work. Um, but I like the Lansky one because again, I, I got a better control over my edge. I got these different grits and it'll hold it at a constant angle. Yes, um, the goal should be to be able to freehand sharpen. So that's on my list of skills that I need to master, right? Um, but starting out, if you can't do that, I would get the Lansky to make sure all your knives that you're using uh, are actually sharp and then you can buy a real cheap knife to practice on until you master that, master that skill. Another thing about sheaths. You see most of these are plastic, right? Plastic or Kydex or some variation. Um, they're gonna retain the knife better. They don't hold moisture, right? They generally have some kind of decent retention on them. Um, like this Gerber strong arm, but it's also got a secondary attachment right there. Belt loop, molly sheath and whatnot. Those are the kind of sheaths I prefer. I don't really care for I don't really care for nylon sheaths. Uh, they retain moisture, they just don't work as well uh, in my experience. Some of you guys might like them, that's fine. Uh, they also generally don't retain as well. So like with this Gerber Stronger, when I'm using it, I can just put it back in the sheath when it's on my belt and not have to worry about this, and I know it's not gonna just fall out, okay? So let's get into some specific uh, recommendations, okay? So starting with some of the more affordable knives. Kershaw is a good one to look into, uh, Spyderco has some good stuff, Steel Will and Cold Steel. Uh, again, there's, I just picked four, okay? There's a lot of companies that make good affordable knives. I just picked four. Uh, I like to go to bladehq.com, so if you're looking at these knives, go to bladehq, they got some good ones. You can look at reviews, you can browse through knives, go on YouTube, look up reviews if you're not sure. Um, it's like this Spyderco Delica. This was a limited run, so it might've been a little more expensive, like 50, 60 bucks, um, but, You'll see Spyderco, I think it's the Tenacious is about $40. Kershaw has some, some, some knives in that range, 30, 40 bucks. Steel Will does, Cold Steel does. Uh, again, they're gonna be more entry level steels. Aus 8, HCR 13 MOV, VG10. So, you know, they'll take a good edge. You're just gonna have to sharpen them a little bit more often, but they're all, all uh, good quality. So for your fixed blade, man, no matter what your budget is, I recommend you get a few more. They're so cheap, they work really well. Uh, in my mind, there's no reason not to get them. But if you're not sure, hey, especially if the budget's tight, grab a more. Like I said, this one here, the more companion's $20. The craft line is 10, right? So if you're tight on your budget, hey, you go find your, your, your cheap folding knife, go get yourself a more craft line, um, and you got your bases covered, all right? For your larger knives. Oh, my bad, I forgot, let me back up. The Cold Steel SRK, where did I put it? So this one here is about 40 bucks. Nice good size knife, it's decently thick. It's got a rubberized handle, nice guard on it. Cold Steel does make this knife in different steels, all right? This is the SK5 version. I believe Amazon had it for 40 bucks. Pretty good option as well. It's got a nice sheath on it, all right? We'll hold the knife. You can uh, secure it properly here with this little strap and it will, it's got a knife loop there, a belt loop, my bad. Um, and then Ontario, Ontario Knife Company, they make a bunch of good stuff, so they're a good company to look into. Your large knives, 
Here's a good example, Kershaw Camp 10, I believe he's a 40, 50 bucks. Uh, you know, and so for these larger knives, and the reason why I recommend this is because it allows you to chop and process wood and you can baton through the wood uh, a lot easier than you can with this. Now you can baton with this, and I've done it a lot on smaller wood to process your wood, and we'll, we'll have videos out on that eventually. It's easier to do it with this. It's easier to de-limb stuff. Uh, you don't really need a hatchet in my mind, especially if you're uh, hiking, the hatchets are just, it's a lot of extra weight. So I'll use something like this, I'll baton through it. Um, another good one, the Ontario SP5 is a good option. Uh, you know, and the reason why I said, hey, if you're really tight, I dropped this option off, and I said, if you're really tight on money, use the folding knife, use the mid, the mid size knife, um, is because you can get away with that. In a survival situation, prepping, you can get away without doing this. This does make your life easier. It gives you more capability. So I do think it should be in your system. But like I said, if you're just starting out, you're a broke college student, right? You're a broke college student, first thing you should do, go buy yourself uh, a cheap folding knife, go get yourself a more craft line and start there, all right? Now, if you got a little bit more money, you say, hey, listen, I'm new and I got a little bit bigger budget. So, Benchmade's a good company to look at specifically. I you know, recommend starting with the bug out. I uh, believe it starts about $100, uh, better steel, better knife, very lightweight, uh, Spyderco. And you'll notice some of these companies are on both lists because they make a wide product range. Spyderco, Kershaw, they make some pretty good knives. Uh, my current everyday carry knife is this Kershaw Dividend S35 VN steel, about $90. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty good quality steel. Uh, the, the Gerber Fastball, very similar to this Kershaw. I believe that one's made in the USA. I think it's S30 VN steel, about the same price point. Lightweight, um, pretty durable for, for a folding knife. For your fixed blade, your mid-size fixed blade knife, the Gerber Strong Arm. So this is my dedicated camp knife. Not too expensive, actually. I think it's about 60 bucks. Uh, you can see it's decently thick. Nice rubberized handle. Got this nice point here. Pretty good quality sheath. You could you could carry it on your belt horizontally. You can take that off. You can carry it vertically. It's got a molly set up in there. Um, you can beat the heck out of this knife. The K Bar uh, Company. They got the Becker series, which is a good series. Look into. Then they got the Fighting Knife series. So everyone's familiar with the K Bar profile, right? The Marine Corps Fighting Knife. All their other fighting knives. This is a good one to have as well. These are coming carbon steel. I, I believe it's ten ninety five. So you got you are going to have to be concerned about rusting. Um, just keep them oiled. You may be able to tell there's a little bit of a sheen on there. I do coat them in oil um, every once in a while. SE is another good one. E S E E. They got a good product line. Just go on Blades Q. E S E E. All right, look up their fixed blades, various sizes. Um, and then for your large uh, blade, your 10 inch, you got the SE Jungless 10. I think it's pronounced Jungless, uh, but if you're trying to spell it J U N G L A S. 10, again, a little pricier, but about that 10 inch blade, you know, same, same philosophy as that Kershaw Camp 10. It just gives you more chopping ability, the ability to baton through larger pieces, uh, pieces of wood. So that pretty much covers everything we're talking about. Another thing too, just real quick, stay away from uh, specialty knives. Let's stay away from bayonets, right? So I got the Spanish M1 bayonet. It's new, unissued, it won't even cut me. It's pretty dull. Uh, a lot of bayonets are unsharpened. Even your sharpened bayonets, like I had this Ontario OKC 3S uh, Marine Corps bayonet, they're not designed to be used as camping tools. Okay? It's designed to put on the end of a rifle right, to use against another person. So uh, they're cool to have. Uh, for what we're talking about, though, I stay away from them. And then also any kind of replica, right? This is a, kind of a rough copy of a Klingon knife. Some of you guys that are into Star Trek and whatnot. Yeah, I have it because it's cool. I would never use that for anything we're talking about, okay? Don't buy your knife at a gas station. Don't buy those kind of exotic looking knives. But you'll notice too that we really didn't get into get into the tactical side. So that's a whole nother subject. This is really more for everyday carry, uh, camping, um, survival situations and whatnot. So that's a whole nother subject. If you like what you saw, like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you got questions, comments, concerns, if you've got experience with some of these knives, or maybe you got a difference of opinion, hey, leave a comment. If you'd like to get more in depth, because like I said, I really just barely hit on some of these topics, just to give you a general idea. Join our Patreon. There'll be a link in the comment section or in the description. Um, join the Patreon, and then that's you know you could you could comment, send messages, 
um, and then we can really dive deep into this subject uh, if you'd like to. Thanks.